This is the Tokyo Tower, completed in 1958, standing at 333 meters tall. It's the second tallest building in Japan. It is also the symbol of rebirth for Tokyo after World War II, completed in a mere one and a half years by about 220,000 craftsmen, much of the work done by hand. Now that's rather impressive. A fun fact, the Tokyo Tower is designed based on the Eiffel Tower and this guy over here stands at 3 meters taller than his rival. Of course, today we are definitely going to not ascend the Tokyo Tower because it's almost time for brunch and we're having tempura. right in front of Tempura Kakiage Yukimura and I guess you can already tell we're a little bit early they're not open yet luckily there is no queue so can't wait for them to open because we are really hungry right now we haven't had breakfast yet <sighs> excited finally see the room when I see that there was no queue like a few minutes before they open, people started stacking up and now we have quite a few customers in the shop. And you can see Chef Suji right behind me, he's preparing uh, the tempura or rather in this case the kakiyage because they are very well known for their kakiyage don, which is basically the tempura but what happens is you use small sauce of seafood and vegetables, you put batter on it and then you fry it into sort of like a, like a piece of like rice cake in a way. <laughs> and we can try it out. Here we are, the kakiyage bun. Beautiful, and you can see it's a, got a really sort of rustic look to it. It feels very homemade, and I like the vibe of this place. It's got a very casual feel with soft music playing in the background. I hope the music isn't picked up too much. Okay, guys, time to do some introductions. This is the piece of kakiyage. You can see it's fried rather crispy. Uh, moderately lightly battered and you can see there are some of vegetables some morsels of prawns there are a lot of prawns very generous in prawns you have got this nice sweet soy sauce that has been doused onto this don and the rice look at the rice it's individually green beautiful okay i can't wait let's dig in i'm gonna break it apart a little bit and maybe try and grab it with some rice oh <laughs> come on rice come on rice <laughs> it's so simple, but it's just done right. You know, when you eat don, whether it's a tempura don, a tendon, or a kakiyaki don, what you want is a sweetness and savouriness from the soy sauce. Then you get a little bit of crisp from the batter, some oil fragrance, and the flavour of the prawn goes through. That, I think, is what is most important for tempura. The prawn is sweet. Mm. Yeah, we have another piece here with more rice, hopefully. Okay, let's go. Mm. This is nice. Light chew, stuff and not mushy. You could definitely tell from the texture of the rice. The rice is basically just a sort of like a, a sponge to soak up all the sweet soy sauce. The key point still lies in the pot. It has got to be some sort of tiger prawn, I'm guessing wild caught tiger prawn, because real tiger prawns, you don't get this kind of natural umami of the sea. The prawn is good. Mm. It's so simple again. So simple, so hearty, so homey. I love this. I love this particular one. I've not had a really good one in so long. I kind of forgot how it tastes like, but now I'm reminded. Of the flavor. Let's see about the miso soup. Mm. Mm. 
first of all, it's a climbing soap. It's very refreshing. You can definitely taste the miso flavor. It's light but it's robust enough. I know it sounds contradictory, but that is what it is. And on top, I think they dropped some, they sprinkled some. Not too sure. It tastes like water droplet, but in a slightly different flavor. It lifts the, the miso up. And this miso, it acts sort of like a cleanser for this rather hearty and sweet, savory kakiyagedon. And I think it's a fantastic match. To be able to pick up daikon. Very lightly pickled. You see, crunchy. Everything is working. Like the side dishes, they are working to, to sort of tone down on the richness, if I may, of this kakiyake don. It's a really good kakiyake don. If you take a few mouthfuls of it and then you get a soup, you get a pickle, it's fantastic. If you just eat it on its own, it might lean. A little heavy. But I think it's pretty common with tendons and kakaredons because they are so rich in all the sweetness and the saltiness of the sauce. And in a way, a little bit, if I may, very mild. Oil of the taste. Very, very mild. This is like one of the really good ones where you could barely taste it. Yesterday we had hardy kakiyage and tendon and yukimura. Today we are in Ginza to visit my favorite tempura spot in Tokyo, two Michelin star tempura kondo, held by chef proprietor Fumio Kondo-san. Now, just like sushi, tempura has always been seen as the fast food for the common man, and it's normally served as an accompaniment alongside udon, soba, in very casual environments such as the case with Yukimura. Kondo is a place where you find out how to draw transcend street food to the level of gourmet food. And with more than 50 years experience under his belt, perhaps Chef Kondo is the best person to showcase how this is achieved. He is famous for his non-oily, light tempura that accentuates the natural flavours of the ingredients. He also has a signature dish called the sweet potato tempura. It's not always available, so let's hope we are lucky enough to order it today. Now, that's enough of the introduction. Let's eat! Alright guys, we are seated at Tempura Kondo and I can see the tray of fresh vegetables right in front of me. There are two segments of Tempura Kondo, like, like a, it's like a tempura bar where one side is Chef Fumio Kondo himself and the other side is his apprentice that will fry tempura. We are seated on the second segment and I remember this apprentice, I think he's been with Chef Kondo for quite a number of years and they are very quickly preparing the ingredients, like the prawns, you can see the prawns were live and they were peeling them while they were live. You can still see a little bit of twitching of the prawn itself and they follow it up by testing the oil temperature with dropping a little bit of the batter and then in goes the first ingredient, prawn heads. The first course, prawn head. And you can see over here, it has barely got any better on very lightly better. And as I lift it up, notice there's very little oil. That is the lightness of tempura. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just sprinkle a little bit of salt on my Oh, they also serve the prawn because we are a little bit slow. I was trying to set up the shop. So anyway, let's quickly start with the crispy prawn heads. <laughs> you can taste the natural sea flavor, the umami of the prawn. The prawn is so crispy. The salt elevates the flavor of the umami of that prawn head. Generally for me, when I eat seafood, I only put salt on because that's what really makes it delicious. Right now, for the prawn body, which I think is always the most important part of the tempura, salt on, and off we go. Mm. Again, natural sweetness. Batter is so light, so thin, it's got a nice crisp surface. And again, the salt, it elevates the flavor of this prawn. The 
guys are totally forgot there was another prawn and this time we are supposed to eat it with the grated daikon and grated ginger together with their sauce so we're gonna call on the sauce right in the middle of the bowl put in the grated ginger and the daikon pick up the nice crispy fighting pot tempura dip it in and off we go mm. it brings another layer of flavor and texture the freshness of daikon a little bit of spice from the grated ginger and the sauce to make sure of sweet and saltiness. Prawn flavor is still very good. However, I personally prefer to just have it with salt because salt really accentuates the natural flavor of the prawn. Mm. Alright, juicy asparagus. Super excited for this one because I remember it to be exploding with juiciness the last time we visited. So again, this time daikon in, sauce in, and then Asparagus goes into the sauce. Give it a good soaking. Mm. Mm. Holy cow, the flavor of the asparagus. Yep, as good as I remember to be. It explodes in your mouth. The quality of the asparagus, the natural sweetness, and that nuance of asparagus flavor. The batter is really just there to sort of give it a crisp texture. And the sauce with the daikon. It brings out the flavor even more. Mm. This is essentially what high end tempura is like. You want to accentuate the natural flavors of each and every ingredient. And in this case, they have done really well here. Mm. <laughs> the texture is amazing. It's crunchy, it's bitey, it's firm. Oh, this is very good. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful biting fish. Oh, God, that's an amazing. The vegetables are so good. Alright, the next course is the scallop dish, and you can see it's very thin carapace of batter on that perfectly cooked scallop. You can still see a little bit of that rawness right in the middle. And the way to eat this is to put on some wasabi and then dip in the sauce. So let's go. Best dish of the day. Ridiculously tender scallop, full of umami, crisp batter. The wasabi lifts it up, the spiciness, and the sauce gives it a sweetness. Oh, this is amazing. Sweet, sweet onion. Panago, which is see you. Sprinkle of salt. And let's go. Mm. Let's try with some sauce. Mm. Panago goes better with the dip. But I believe we are at the final individual tempura piece and this is the sweet potato tempura. In fact, as you order it, it's not preparing because it needs about 30 minutes to cook. You can see them chopping it uh, into blocks and then putting it into the oil to slowly kind of fry it with a very thin layer of batter. So what you get here is a steamy hot pile that looks exactly like a roasted potato. Look at that powderiness on the body. I'm gonna cook right in and I'm ready to have this signature dish I've not had for three years.
dozen things like a jump right now. It's a it's a roasted potato, sweet potato with very crisp batter. This is amazing. This is so refined. Mm. The powderiness, the firmness, the bite texture, assisted by the crispy tempera skin. It is so light, so thin, not oily at all. Alright, scallop was the best before this arrived. This is the best now. Goodness, this is amazing. Alright guys, last main course, the carbs course. So we've got here kakiage with rice, the side of miso soup I've been on, and an assortment of pickles. I love how nice the kakiage don looks. Look at those prawns, they're so nice. It's coloured red in colour, with a very thin layer of batter. I'm gonna pick up the prawn with the rice now, and let's quickly give it a go. Best kakiage don. Natural flavor of the prawn is very sweet. Better, still lightly crisp despite being doused in that nice soy sauce mix. Soy sauce mixture is impeccable. Just salty enough with a good enough sweetness. And the rice, individually green. I'm sorry you came around. It's just better. There's no oil aftertaste, only oil flavors. Mm. The scallops too. Plating time! Let's talk about the first spot that we went to yesterday. Yukimura Kakiage and Tempura. Yep. The hearty bowl of Kakiage Don. Rich sweet soy sauce mixture. Juicy umami very sweet prawns. Plump fluffy rice. It all comes together harmoniously to form relatively simple yet well-balanced layer of flavour. And the miso and pickles help cut down on the richness of Don. Alternating them with the Don crepe and awesome meal. The main play of this bowl of don definitely lies in the natural sweetness of the prawns and Chef Suji has done really well in balancing the batter to prawn ratio ensuring that each plump morsel of protein shines through the moderately thin batter. The only slight gripe that I might have is the ever so mild aftertaste of oil which I understand is very very difficult to remove entirely. All in all, it's a really good bowl of kakiage don that's it, we did notice some slight ingredient inconsistencies. For example, the abi tempura on quest tempura don wasn't as naturally sweet as my kakiage, which is a pity, and wouldn't put it on the chef, but there is a need to point it out. Mm. And with all of this taken into consideration, tempura kakiage yukimura score half a plate on the gourmet plate, which means some high quality kakiage don right there. Absolutely recommend it if you are in Tokyo. In fact, I think it's probably the best tempura or kakiage don in a casual manner that you can get. And I think it's also pretty value for money because for a kakiage don, I think it's below 1,500 yen. It's just really good value and absolutely delicious and hard work. Yep. All right, on to the next spot, tempura kondo. Mm, still the best tempura we have had. Once again, Stella Mill. The skill behind the light, non-oily tasting batter is the key. It's there just for the crisp and a light fragrance, allowing the flavor of the ingredient to shine. In fact, throughout the meal, it didn't even bog us down in any way. It even deviously gives us the illusion that we're eating something really healthy. Vegetables, bursting with juices and sweetness, protected by a thin carapace of fragrant batter. Holy cow! And the tempura sweet potato from Chiba. <laughs> it's absolutely a piece of a dish to eat. That powdery, firm texture oozing its innate sweet potato flavour. It's like the soul of the sweet potato is trapped within and slowly releases as you bite into it. Kakegi obviously was no slouch either, perfectly done with a beautiful bowl of warm, soft, fluffy rice underneath. Absolutely the best kakage today. 
at this point, I think it's rather clear as to how good the skills of the chefs at Kondo are. They undoubtedly serve the bura in its peak form. However, as how transcendent a piece of tempura is depends entirely on the innate sweetness of the ingredient it coats. Therefore, there are still definitely some inconsistencies every single visit that we came. For example, in this trip, the initial two prawns were sweet but they were not brimming and bursting with umami. It's just not as exciting compared to our previous trips. But the sweet potato today is significantly sweeter than our last visit. It was crazy, crazy good today. What all this means is that aside from the skill of the chef, a certain element of luck comes into play because even if you get the same batch of very high quality produce, not all of them have the exact same flavour depth and flavour profile. And I wouldn't put that to the chef, however I think it is very important to take note of this one. And taking all this into consideration, Tebra Condor absolutely scored two plays on the coffee plate. Which means it is a sophisticated tempura inducing multiple mouthgasms. Yep. Absolutely a must visit if you are into tempura and in Tokyo, it gives you a view into what the pinnacle form of tempura feels like. So there you have it, two tempura spots, one casual style and one in a way fine dining style. We had lots of fun filming them and we had lots of fun eating all this delicious food. Wish you were here to eat it with us. Hope you enjoyed this food vlog. If you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you had to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell button. Till you again next week, again, still in Tokyo. Yeah. Bye.